basic understanding of engineering issues for architects is a necessity to be capable to discuss with engineers about architecturally relevant um, parts of the load-bearing structure. So one of these elements is the horizontal structure. If we go to roofs, we um, want to get from one side uh, to the other. And here we have different possibilities. We could uh, operate with uh, beams going in the inverse direction and then having rafters put in these beams. And the rafters would be working as beams again. So this would be called um, a purlin and rafter roof because there are purlins in this construction. But if I suppress the purlins, my uh, rafters would push outwards. And so I would have to contain this outward pushing by something that links them together, like for example a tangent rod. And you will see that this resembles very much to our forces in the beam with compression on top and tension in the lower part. Often these are linked by a um, sort of suspended column here in the middle. Um, and if I turn the system around again, I would get a king post, which is a sort of suspended column and compression in the upper part. Going a little further, I could also have two suspended columns and this is called a queen post. Two posts instead of one. I don't know where the queen comes from, but uh, this would stay here tension in the lower part. Uh, compression in all the rest, it's also possible. And, um, but I'm uh, getting uh, rectangles in the system. So if I'm enlarging this, I have to work with something that resembles my initial parabola. So certain aspects are alike for horizontal and vertical structure. Like for example, if uh, I don't have enough depth then I have to create it by giving additional depth to the structure, like pilasters, reinforcing the wall, or having a box that will stabilize the ends of the wall by um, turning the wall in the other direction, and then this becomes the depth that is rigidifying the wall. And um, I could also start to fold the wall, giving it a structure like this. And this was the same that we have been discussing for the horizontal structures as well, where the notion of height is of importance as well. So you can uh, give additional height and then uh, this, once you fold it very narrowly, it uh, becomes maybe a sort of beam structure again. So we have to do with systems that are not blocked at one side or the other, but that can be morphed one into the other by uh, slight changes and at a certain point it will have become something different than it was before. So now I have a load-bearing system, uh, primary beam and secondary beams, and once again a primary beam which is supported by uh, columns. And what could happen next? Next 
this whole thing would collapse because of horizontal loads like for example wind or its proper weight which is not completely in uh, the right uh, position so it would uh, become instable and collapse. So what can I do against this? It's called bracing. So this bracing could be done by diagonals because um, if I have a rectangle and I have a horizontal load, I can deform it into a parallelogram. So uh, if I want to change this, I have to make out of four articulations only three in one relevant system. This could be di done with a diagonal. So three points are stable, four points are not because I can deform this. So if I'm trying to uh, apply this to our ori original uh, system, I could uh, try to transform these um, primary columns and primary beam into um, something stable and together with the secondary beam here, I could try to transform this into a stable system as well. But then I will recognize that the horizontal structure here can still be deformed. So this should work as a plate as well, which could also be obtained by um, diagonals. But the load could be applied to uh, this corner as well. And then the whole thing would be put in rotation and it could collapse um, rotating in itself. So to avoid that I need three layers. This becomes uh, kind of difficult to read. So three layers. One layer, this one, second piece, this one in my sketch, third piece, this one here. To uh, rigidify the thing in plan, plus a horizontal surface here, which is working as a stable surface as well. Three in plan plus the horizontal. As for the roof structure, we have a windmill layout. You can see that the primary beams are attached to another primary beam at the angle, and then the secondary structure fills out. Uh, the primary windmill and then the boards that form the surface are resting on the secondary structure. So in the Olympic roofs that I have been showing you we don't have this bracing problem because the, the columns are linked to the ground by the roof structure and as this is done three-dimensionally uh, we don't have to brace it because the uh, tension to keep the columns up is uh, taken into account in uh, the roof structure. So uh, this takes a foundation here which is sufficient to take the enormous amount of tension that this um, construction introduces in the ground. And here we have compression in these com constructions that had, has also to be introduced into the ground. If I have a cantilever, uh, we have been seeing that uh, moments are the biggest at the point where the uh, cantilever starts. And um, this load here can be taken into the ground, for example, if I want to have an observation platform suspended over a valley. But I could apply this to a building structure as well. The additional floors can be suspended here and then 
the uh, tension dot here has to be introduced into the ground again. So you can see that working with structures uh, gives you an enormous potential in terms of architectural expression. This has only been a very, very short overview of the potential that could be existing. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing what uh, you will uh, try to get out of it by applying it to a concrete uh, building structure. But it's very important to think in primary, secondary, tertiary systems and how they meet and that everything can be built as well. So try to conceive a system and then um, try to make it buildable and this will contribute uh, an enormous potential to your architectural uh, projects.